Hello and welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. Tina McDermott here and today I'm going to show you how to make this keto friendly choco flan cake that is magic and it is for Hispanic Heritage Month that starts September 15th through October 15th. All right, here we go. I've already made the caramel sauce. And if you haven't made your own caramel, it's an act of love because you have to stir it every minute and it was perfectly fine. And I, I did this earlier because it took quite a while and I wanted it to cool down. So it's so simple. I took two cups, I think it's two cups of heavy cream. And then I did a sugar substitute because we don't want all of that sugar in our bodies. We want something that is going to be low in the glycemic index and not spike our blood sugar. Especially wonderful for people who are pre-diabetic or diabetic, okay? Just thinking, just think about that. Because the carbs here are only four grams per serving. Now this is Swerve and it's a brown sugar Swerve. You don't have to use the brown sugar Swerve. You could also use, Swerve has um, confectioner sugar, the white sugar, and I also like to use monk fruit confectioner sugar in all of my baking. It does not spike your blood sugar levels, really important. Dash of vanilla and a pinch of salt, and I brought it to a boil and I just kept stirring it every minute for about a half an hour until I got a nice, thick caramel sauce. Who doesn't love caramel? This is gonna go into the bottom of the bunt pan, okay? So we're gonna put this in the bottom of the bunt, bunt, bunt pan. Okay, who remembers that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Am I allowed to even say about movies? Here we go. And the bunt pan, I'm gonna butter it really generously, okay? So we've got my, you can use a napkin. I've always used a napkin until I discovered this silicone um, brush that I love. So make sure you get it up on the sides and be generous about it because we don't want our cake to stick. Make sure you put the butter on the inside as well, the inside part of the tube here, okay? So that's what I'm doing. Got all that butter in there. We don't need that anymore. And now we're gonna drizzle just a little bit of the caramel sauce into the bottom of the bun can, not a ton, not a ton, but oh, drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Maybe it got a little too cool. So I let this cool completely, okay? Let it cool completely. You don't want this to be super hot as you're pouring it in here because we don't want the, it, the cake to cook until it's in the oven. By the way, I have my oven on at 360 degrees. It's preheating right now. And I'm just gonna put just a little bit more just to get that all around. There we go. And we're gonna save the rest for last. We're gonna put that on at the end. So just so you see, not a ton that I put in there. So let's set this aside for a moment and now let's make the cake batter part of it, okay? I've got a half a cup of water already in my container here and then I'm, I have a spatula somewhere. Just gonna throw in all the ingredients. I have a quarter cup of sour cream. If you don't have sour cream, feel free to use some Greek yogurt, that's fine. And you can also put a little bit of, if you wanna sour it, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar and that will sour that yogurt. But sour cream, wonderful. We're gonna do sour cream. We're gonna do, what else? Let me make sure I get all my ingredients. One and a half cups of almond flour. I love to use almond flour because A, it's keto friendly. Not that you have to be keto to make this cake, it's just low in carbohydrates. And it's also gluten free, so you don't have to worry about any of the gluten. And if you know me, I have had Lyme disease that gave me some challenges with my brain. So gluten really, really sends me reeling. So I try really hard to stay away from gluten and I recommend that everyone else does too, for many, many, many reasons. Now we're gonna do some chocolate protein powder. I did not have chocolate protein powder because I prefer vanilla protein powder. I prefer vanilla. And I think I'm gonna do a half a cup of it and I need a half a cup measure, which I have somewhere in my life, got one. And now you could always make a vanilla protein powder chocolate simply by adding cocoa powder. Now, since this particular recipe calls, that wasn't quite half a cup, so I'm gonna, there we go. That's a half a cup. Since this recipe calls for chocolate protein powder, when it comes to my cocoa powder, here's my cocoa powder, I'm going to put a little extra. It calls for two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and I'm just gonna double that because I love chocolate. A little bit of a chocoholic these days. 
just my whole life. Love chocolate. So anytime you want to make your protein powder chocolate, you just add cocoa powder. You can use Hershey's, you could use whatever you want, okay? So I did four tablespoons of cocoa powder. Four tablespoons of cocoa powder. We're gonna use a quarter cup of sugar substitute because we want the cake to be just a little sweet. And once again, I'm gonna use my monk fruit sweetener. And that's a quarter cup. If you want it less sweet, then use less. Now in recipes, this is not necessarily one for one, okay? Use recipes that are specific for monk fruit because if you substitute exactly a half, uh, like a quarter cup of monk fruit for a quarter cup of sugar, I don't know if it's going to be as sweet, quite honestly, because I don't really bake with sugars and stuff. So we've got the monk fruit in there. We're gonna do a teaspoon of some baking powder and try to be exact with your baking powder. That's why they give you this little lip here so that you can brush off the top and get an exact measurement. Also, another note about baking powder is that once it expires, toss it. It literally doesn't do what it's supposed to do, which is make it rise. Quarter cup sour cream, we're gonna do two eggs. A little bit of a hack when it comes to, a kitchen hack, when it comes to eggs, never crack an egg right into all of those ingredients because what if, what if that egg is bad? You would know an egg is bad because A, it would be really liquidy, it would smell, it would um, be off color. So always do that. I, I made the mistake the other day, I was making a frittata and I had all the cheese in there and then I'm cracking all the eggs, got a bad egg. I had to throw the whole thing away. So be careful. All right, two eggs, we already have the water and we're gonna do a quarter cup of some butter. So here we go. You get some butter. I've already melted it. I thought that was about a half a cup or a quarter cup. Yep. There we go. You could always use ghee if you don't want butter, but there's already dairy in here. Okay. So there we go. We've got our quarter cup of butter in there. Okay. And we're just gonna mix this up. Now, if you wanted to do this with a hand mixer, you could do it with a hand mixer. If you wanna do it with a beater, you can do it with a beater, whatever you wanna do. I got cocoa all over me. It's all good. Okay. Probably better off with a wooden spoon at this point, since it's getting all inside of my beater. Okay. Let me try my little spatula. I love these handy dandy little small spatulas. I probably have about eight of them. I use them all the time, all the time. Just mix that up nice. So we've got our nice cake batter. So you don't really need the hand blender or the hand mixer, I meant to say because that mixed up pretty quickly, right? Mixed up pretty quickly. So on top of the chocolate sauce, we are going to put our batter, our cake batter. Then we're gonna make the flan for the top and then we're gonna bake it. And watch what happens when it comes out. You're gonna go, what, did that really happen? The flan is gonna mix, is gonna switch to the other side. It's really cool the way that this cake works. That's why I call it magic. Magic cake. Okay, now we wanna make sure that this batter, the cake batter is evenly distributed. I'll show it to you as soon as I get it in here. That's why I'm taking my time putting it in. And give me a couple more seconds here. Oh, all of this batter. Get all of that batter in there. Now, if you don't want chocolate, you don't have to put the cocoa powder in there, but it's always nice to have chocolate. I love chocolate. You could always just make it vanilla. Okay. Here we go. I'm removing any of the batter from the sides, any of the caramel sauce, I'm removing it from the sides. And I want that batter to lay flat. So I'm just gonna bang it on the counter and jiggle it a little bit. So you see how now, oh, I can't, 
if I tilt it, it won't be flat anymore. So you just want it to be flat, okay? Here we go, we're set with that. Let me get the batter off of my countertop here. And now let's make the flan, okay, we got that. I'm gonna use my blender for the flan. And the flan is going to have two cups of heavy cream. Two cups of wonderful, beautiful, heavy cream. There we go. We're going to have three fourths of a cup of that. It's, which one did I use? Oh, there's another brand that I'm using here. This is again, confectioner sugar, but this one is called Keto Sweet. This is Keto Sweet and it's made with erythritol. This is made with monk fruit. This one is made with also erythritol. And you're like, Tina, what in the world is erythritol? Erythritol is a sugar, um, is uh, uh, fermented vegetables. It's a sugar made from fermented vegetables that passes right through the digestive system and does not spike your insulin levels. This is vanilla, and this is a Madagascar vanilla, which just really pops the flavor. Don't chintz on your Vanilla, make sure I have all of the flawed ingredients. Heavy cream, four eggs, I need eggs. Where are my eggs? I wanna remind you, happy chickens lay happy eggs. So, get yourself some free range eggs, organic eggs, those are all the best. We're gonna do four eggs, and once again, what am I doing? Cracking my eggs separate. Crap it, crack, cracking them separate, one at a time. Here we go. And also, when you do it like this, if you get shells, it's easier to get the shell out. And you know what, I should show you how to get shell out of, an, of a cracked egg. If you have a piece of shell in there, I want you to remember shell attract, like attracts like. That's how, that's how it goes. I'm gonna put a little piece of shell in there. I'm gonna sabotage myself here. And how do you get shell out is, I'll show you. You get your shell, you get your shell, and dig it out with the shell because the shell will attract that little tiny piece of shell, okay? And it'll help you get it out. Don't try it with your fingers, it won't work. Get the shell and it digs it right out. Okay, so that's four eggs and I'm gonna blend this up using my blender. And I'll be right back. sure I got everything in there. Yep, vanilla extract, four eggs, good. Okay, that's how easy it is. Now I'm gonna pour the flan mixture right on top of my cake. Actually, I don't need to spin it. It just goes right around. There we go. There we go. Now I noticed I have cake on the pan here. So the easiest thing to do, you could get your rubber spatula to take that off. Otherwise, it'll get burned on there, and that will not be fun to take off later. So I'm just going to clean that off. Okay, next. This is an important piece. This is a very important piece I want you to do here. I want you to get a pan that's big enough to put your bunt pan in. And then I want you to get some boiling water and you're gonna pour the boiling water on the sides, about an inch up, okay, about an inch up. Yep, that's about all of this, there we go. That will help the flan to prevent it from cracking. Now there's an essential piece that I forgot to do before I put the water in there, so I'm gonna carefully do this now. My tin foil, okay. I'm gonna seal it with the tin foil. This is a method you use for cheesecakes as well. And flan is kind of a cheesecake, right? Got the heavy cream, the eggs in there. It just doesn't have the, the heavy cream cheese stuff. Okay, so seal that beautifully. I'm just gonna check it one more time all the way around, make sure it's nice and sealed. We've got the boiling water in there. Now this is gonna go in the oven for about 90 minutes at about 360 degrees. 
and I cannot wait to show you how beautiful this cake comes out. All right, we're putting it in the oven and I'll be right back. Keto friendly choco flan magic cake cooked in the oven for about 90 minutes. I cooled it on the countertop for a couple of hours. I put it in the refrigerator for another hour. It's time to show the magic, okay? I am not promising you a perfect cake that it's gonna come out, but we're gonna all cross our fingers and it's gonna come out beautiful because remember how much butter I put in this bundt pan? It should slip right out, but just in case, I'm just gonna go around the edges with my handy dandy silicone spatula. It is loose, it's very loose around the edges and I heated up the caramel sauce. I can't wait to eat this. I'm so excited, can you tell? I hope you're excited too, are you excited with me? Yup, it is nice and loose. I'm gonna do the inside too, but the spatula is too big. So I'm gonna try a little knife, a butter knife, just to be sure. Don't chintz on that butter. You make sure you put all the butter in there. It's okay to have a little butter. This plate has been in my family for I don't know how many years. And I saw it at my mom's house and I said, Mom, we've had that plate forever. She goes, you want, you take. And I says, oh, okay. I'll show it on my show. There we go. That slipped right out. How exciting. Yay. You have to celebrate the little things in life. You just have to celebrate. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Look how beautiful that is. Before I even cut it open, I wanted to show you how gorgeous. Look what happened. There, of course, the caramel sauce is at the top. And I'm going to cut it now. And we're gonna see if the magic truly did happen, okay? We're gonna see if the magic truly did happen. The magic was that the flan comes to the top and the cake goes to the bottom. Because remember, I put the caramel sauce in first, I put the cake batter in next, and the flan last. So let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. We're gonna cut it like so, and like so. Here we go, look at that! Look how absolutely gorgeous that is. Look how gorgeous that is. How exciting is that? We're gonna serve it with a little bit of extra caramel sauce. Hopefully it just drizzles on there. There we have it. Our absolutely, holy cow, we pulled it off. Paleo perfect, I was thinking. No, paleo friendly. Choco Flan Magic Cake. I'm gonna change the whole title to say Magic Cake because you see the magic that happened? Cake, flan, oh! We have to put a fork on this and I wanna show you from the end, look at that. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. Holy cow, I am so excited. I'm more excited for you to try to make this, this Choco Flan Magic Cake because you are going to love it, your family's going to love it, and it's going to be, I hope you're just as excited as I am to make this and to serve it to your loved ones. Thank you so much for being here today. Until next time, bye for now.